In this video, I'm going to show you a few tricks to get cleaner prints in Creality 5.1. I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking. We're going to jump right into it. But before we do, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay not only offers high quality PCBs and assemblies, they also offer a wide range of maker services like CNC machining and 3D printing with access to exotic materials. Visit them on the web and check out the PCB Way 7th Project Design Contest. Okay, so I have this nice little planter pot I downloaded from STL Flicks. Pretty cool looking model. The downside is it's a potential for a lot of stringing in between. Now, if you have your temperature, your flow rate, and your retraction dialed in pretty good, You'll eliminate a lot of stringing, but maybe not all of it. This first tip is going to help us eliminate more stringing. Um, we can't rely on temperature, flow, and traction alone. Let's go ahead and we're going to slice this up and see what we get. Okay, uh, right now I'm looking at 3 hours, 19 minutes. And it doesn't look much different than any other model we've ever sliced before. Not a big deal. But let's go ahead and come over here on the left side of the screen for the G code preview. And we're going to scroll down where all these colors are. And what we're going to do is turn on the travel. Wow. The blue lines indicate the movement of your nozzle during the printing of this. As you can see internally, there is a lot, and that's why sometimes you'll get a lot of stringing on the inside of uh, cylinder uh, projects. And when we come out here to the fins, this is pretty much what I expected to see. All this travel between, uh, that's potential for a lot of stringing. Blobs, anything oozing out of the nozzle as it passes over. But let's go ahead and we're going to make a, a real simple change. We're going to come over here to the right side of the screen and we're going to go to our quality tab. It's one on the top right here. And we're going to scroll down till we find avoid crossing walls. And here it is. So I'm going to enable avoid crossing walls. Uh, I'm going to leave the max detour length at zero just for now. And let's go ahead and slice this up. Wow, what a difference. Um, I mean, obviously, we're still getting some travel up here at the top. That's crossing over. Uh, those lines, blue lines down at the bottom, that would be on the bottom surface itself. But we won't have stringing there. There's the potential up here at the top. Like I said, that's assuming that your temperature, your flow, your retraction, if that's all dialed in, if you're seeing any stringing, it's probably going to be right in this area. And that would clean up real easy. Um, let's go look at the time. Or our time is 3 hours, 17 minutes. Not a big difference there, but it, it's definitely worth doing. I'm impressed with how much we got done there. Okay, now let's come back to the avoid crossing walls, uh, the max detour length. What this, you can set this as millimeters or percentage. And this just sets up how much of a detour you want to take. So let's just say uh, 250 millimeters. Hit the enter there. And we'll see if it makes a difference or not. No, that's not much of a difference. Time is the same. Reset that back to zero. We'll try a shorter length and see. Uh, let's go 25 millimeters. Slice one more time and see what we get. Yeah, you can see 25 didn't help us at all. So by leaving at zero, it let, seems to let Creality Print decide which is the best route. So if I turn that back to zero, yeah, that seems to be doing it for us. Now you can set this up, like I said, to a percentage. Let's try that real quick. 
place that Yeah, now we're back to having a lot of travel in between the fins. My preferred method is leaving this at zero. And I just seem to get a much cleaner print when I do it this way. It's not hard, pretty easy, and it goes a long way to making a cleaner print. All right, this, this one's pretty simple. Um, just take a few seconds at the beginning of any print and make sure you pick the right top layer. Now, this here is monotonic. It doesn't look too bad. But being a cylinder, if, for me, what I like to do is I come down here to the Strength tab. Personally, I think it should be quality, but it's strength. And go to your top and bottom shells. And for your top surface pattern, change that sub to something that fits better, like in this case, concentric. And slice that. And that is just a much better top surface. All right, so if we have a cube, we really want to slice that concentric. Mm, some people might actually like that pattern. I personally don't. So for this one, I would stay with the monotonic. I just think that looks much better for this. Okay, so let's say we have a case where we have one of each. We have multiple parts on a plate. So how do we handle this one? Easy. Let's uh, start with the cylinder. Click on your cylinder. What you want to do is over here in the process area, go to object. And we're going to just change the object. That's it. And what I'll do is I will change that entry. And slice. And we'll take a look at what we get. We have concentric on the cube or on the cylinder and we maintain monotonic over here but let's say on the cube we want a different shape well we do the same thing go to object um, make sure your cube is select and pick the top surface you want um let's pick this hilbert curve i've never used that let's go ahead and see what we get And there we go. We got concentric over here and have the Hilbert curve over here. That's pretty cool. And you can do this for as many models as you have on the plate. Okay, so I have this other planter. And I really like this one. Uh, it's also from STL Flex. It's got a lot of nice detail here in the middle. The problem I have with it is this band at the bottom, right below the de where the detail starts. It always prints off glossy. I want the print to have this matte finish, and I want that consistent throughout the entire print. Um, I'm going to show you how to make that happen here, and it's all done through the speed. But we're going to start by slicing first and taking a look. Okay, so as you can see, there's really nothing unordinary about this. Until we change from structure type in our G-code preview, and we're going to go to speed. And you can see we got this teal color, a darker shade of teal. Um, it's really slowing down here. And what's happening is as our printer is moving slow, the filament is sitting in the hot nozzle longer. So it's kind of cooking. And when you get higher temperatures, you get a glossier finish. So what I want to do is basically increase the speed, the printing speed in this area. Uh, so that the filament's not sitting in there too long. So let's go ahead and make a few changes. Um, I'm going to first go to my filament. I'm going to make a quick change there in my cooling section. Uh, I'm going to disable this where it's set for my cooling, slow down printing for better layer cooling. I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to come over here to my processes on the right side of the screen, and we got our quality tab, strength, go down to speed. We're going to come down to the overhang area. Now I could go ahead and just uncheck this box of slow down for overhangs, but there's a lot of detail in there that is overhangs that I want to maintain. So what I'm going to do is just not slow it down as much. So I'm going to come down here where it's 0 to 25%. I'm going to leave that at 0, but starting with 25 to 50% range. 
I'm going to go up to 100 millimeters per second. I'm going to work backwards by 20s. For 50 to 75 percent, I'm going to change that to 80. And when I get to 75 percent to 100, I'm going to change that to 60. So we're still slowing down, just not as much. Let's go ahead and slice and see what we get. And here you can see we definitely went from uh, the dark teal, we moved up into a dark green. So we're definitely printing faster here. And what we're going to do now is print this out. We're going to take a quick look at it and see how we did. All right, that looks pretty good. It's a lot better. It's more consistent. Um, I really like the way this came out. I got a little bit of an elephant's foot here at the bottom, but we can go ahead and fix that real easily. Okay, so like I said, I liked everything. I saw on that only thing I am going to change and it's a real simple change is we're going to come back up. I'm going to leave all those settings the way it was. We're going to come back up to our quality tab and that little bit of an elephant's foot we noticed. We're going to be we're in our quality section. Let's scroll on down until we get to precision. And what we're going to do is just come down here. It couldn't be any easier for us. Elephant foot compensation. We're at 0.15 millimeters. I'm going to take that up to, let's just say, 0.4. Uh, that's probably overkill. I could probably get away with, you know what, 0.3. And I'm going to leave that as it is for one layer. And what that's going to do, it's going to bump that first layer inward just a little bit. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it on the slicer or not. But it, it bumps it in, and it's just makes for a more consistent print if that happens. You don't always have to do that. When we come down here and we're going to look and see what we got. There you go. You can see that first blue layer right below the orange. Now that steps in a little bit more. So that'll, that'll help you with that elephant's foot. And as you saw, we got consistent printing throughout the entire model. And let's move on. All right. So this tip uh this is a pretty good one see this little wall right here on the outside corner spin this around just a little cut in there it's pretty thin let's go ahead and slice and what you notice is we lose that wall now there's a simple fix for this go back to prepare and what i'm going to do is on the strength tab to come down i'm going to click on that right here with the wall section wall loops right below that it's detect thin walls go ahead enable that and resplice and there see we got our wall back single wall basically rise it's best to put that in as acting as an inner and an outer wall at the same time now what you're seeing here that's the zc uh, if you went ahead and moved your D-seam somewhere else, it would not show up in that location. This so happens that's where it's at on this. And that's a pretty simple trick. It'll come in handy when you have high detail models. Um, say you have embossed text on your model and you were losing some of the text. That would be a way to get it back. Remember that one, detect thin walls. So like I was saying, for the embossed text, detect thin walls can really help out. This here is a pretty small part. Let's go ahead and slice this. Okay, you can see, really see it's broken up pretty bad in there. Um, losing a lot. So let's go ahead and enable detect thin walls and reslice. And there we go. Got readable text. But let's see if it prints. And yes, it does print. Now, not so much a slicer tip, more of a printer tip. I did print this with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. For something with that kind of small detail, I would have been better off going with the 0.2. But it's proving the point on thin walls, and it does work, and it can get you out of a jam. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please 
consider subscribing.